the egg. Back in Islam, your brother. Islam, peace. Hey, I take wash your toy each. Wash your toy each. We can see you, yeah. All right. All right, we're going to go over um some of the words within the wa United Washington language. Um, United Washington language is essentially um, a combination of Papa Elegwe, um, the Munchie, a Munchie um, language combined with Algonquin language coming from the um, Choctaw, which is Washington, as well as also the Lenape or the Lenny Lenape. Um, which is the northern branch of the Washita. Um They are referred to as the Delaware Moors. They're also referred to as, um, within history, as um, the Nanakotes. All right, so essentially, the Algonquin language, if you do your research, if you get any information from Dr. Clyde Winters, he'll tell you that the majority of the Algonquin language is actually Mandis, um, meaning that it comes from the Mandis people which the Omex were the Mandis um, people. Um, there's a recent report in which that shows that um, the Omex were in Louisiana, um, possibly prior to their settlement within um, the Yucatan Peninsula along the Mexican Gulf, um, what is called now Tabasco, La Venta um, area within Mexico. All right, so um, this is something which that that means that the Omex or the She people was spread it out throughout the southern region, along up the eastern seaboard and across the Great Lakes. All right, also to the west area along California. All right, these are all so-called um, black people. All right, African descent, but much older than just 400 years ago. We're talking about over 5,000 years ago with the Omex. We're talking about 75,000 years ago with the Fosums. We're talking about 100,000 years ago with the Omex. And we're talking about over 2 million years with the Twa people, who is misnomic, the Pygmies. All right. Now, the first one you see here is Aate Washito Ish. Aate Washito Ish. All right. In his rough draft form, it says, Peace be unto you. But really, what it says is that um, I greet the God or the light within you as the God or light within you greets me. All right. The light is the serpent, which is Kundalini, the mother goddess principle. Hence, Washita, which is the Egyptian or Metunetra word, Ushita. Ushita is the feminine aspect of the Uraeus, which is, in the Greek terminology, is the Caduceus. So I'm um, actually is not just greeting the light, but the life principle within you, as I know that that life or light principle is what moves the physical body. So I'm not just looking at the flesh. I'm going straight into the essence of you. Hence, this greeting goes a little bit far deeper than just peace be unto you, which is just said, you know, within, um, you know, Islam or Arabic, you know, when someone say, assalamu alaikum. It goes a little bit deeper, so we say, as United Washita Nationals, um, we state "Ehate Washita Ish" whenever we greet someone. All right, um, those that is part of the temple structure or um, relate with the temple. Um, above, up under the Prophet Noble Ali, just simply say Islam. Um, Islam is nothing more than, um, which means peace but it's more so inner peace. So we're looking for the inner aspect, all right? Um, that's what we want to agree. Um, the next one is 
Isla Fahulan. Isla Fahulan. Which means essentially how is your spirit? You know, so it goes a little bit deeper into just saying, Well, how are you doing? And how is your spirit? All right. Um the third one of course is rather easy. Hey. Which essentially means hi. So hey is actually um a term in which that we utilize. All right, within the language. So that is um universal in some sense, at least English wise. All right. Kalamasi. Kalamasi heck. Kalamasi heck. Kalamasi heck. Which means how are you? Kalamasi heck. How are you? Right? Nula mal si. Nula mal si. Means I am well. Nula mal si. Nula mal si. Right? Shaboom. Shaboom. Means you know, I'm good. That's good. Good. Great. Kalista means listen. Kalista, listen. Ok means and. Ok means and. Oki and you. Yibo means yes. Lapi again. Nabia. No. All right. Tactani. Tactani. I don't know. Tactani. All right. Really. Kish. Once again. Mm-hmm. Really, Kishku is a good day. Really, Kishku, really, Kishku, really, Kishku is a night is a good day. Tellu, Wincy, Tellu, Wincy. Tellu Wincy. My name is so Tellu Wincy Aling. My name is Aling, the all knowing. Tellu Wincy Kedera. My name is Kedera. Right. We're just going to go over about 25 of these for today. I'm going to send them out to everyone so that they can master it. Um, and everyone will actually say these words the next class individually. All right? Keku. Heck. Kati. Lu. Winski. What is your name? Kaku he. Kati Lu Winski. What is your name? Wanishi. Wanishi means thank you. Wanishi. That word is also used by another Algonquin tribe. By many Algonquin tribes, actually. One in particular was, uh, remember when the sister um, was um, first teaching us the language? Algonquin. Right. What tribe, um, the tribe she was from? Wakama. The Wakama? Kishi. Kishi. 
Kishi. All right. It can be pronounced Kishi or Kisi, which means please. <laughs> Boapo or Boapa Masa. Boapa Masa. Boapa Masa. Until next time. So instead of just saying bye, you say, Boapa Masa. Andabas. Andabas. Or andabis. Which means with your permission. Ahita. Formerly yes. Buma. Mother. Malik Malikitawa Malikitawa or Malikatiwa me father Nasu brother Nasu Mati sister you see the word Mayat is there but it's our gone from Mayat which is an intercomedic word means sister a female principal Sika, black or things. Siksu, all right, dark skinned people, all right. Ahas, crow. Ahasa, crows. You. Okay. Yo. Yo. Mm, penta min. Understand. Heck. Ask a question. Hempus. Shirt. Hempsa. Shirt. Ni, I, ki, you, naki, he, she. All right, naki um, is very ancient. Is is naga or serpent? Is tied to serpent, as in um, Kuku Khan, Gotama's. Was a koto within the Inca, the Mayan, the Toltec, the Olmec language. Nika um, symbolizes serpent or the serpent race, serpent people. Nika, Naga. All right. Nailuna. All right, means us. All right, Kiluna also means we. Kilua, you all. Nikamo, Nikamo means they. Na, inanimate. Ne, animate. Have to handy word. D, of or for. Nasu, they. Kiwiti, one. Nisa, two. Nia, three. Niwa, 
four. Pali Nak five. Kiwi Dash six. Nasha Nayash Nasha seven. Next eight. Jolomar Brown, El Bay. Nine. Telling. Ten. We. Head. Wheeler. Heads. Hopikuna. Shoulders. Keku. Knees. Oak and quick sita toes chuka what atako no not at all wish kinko eyes wiki yogna nose he we Daoka ears Tongue Mouth We Lincha Fingers Wish Kona Elbows Te Heart Akashiwa It is green Akash he or she is green, as in green with envy, jealousy, so forth and so on. Ka koi, ka kola, ka kola, frog. Eh, we yen blanket. Kawiyana blankets. Tawipi body. Tawipia body. She. But. Mele. Body here. Shan. Shan. Bones. Shanna. Bones. Weepy tooth. Okay, this is just the first list to go over. Like we said, we're going to give everyone a chance to do about 25 out of the list. Um, are there any questions concerning the, um, the language so far? You taking it? Instead of taking it in, so not so much. I I can't hear you too well. Say it again. No, I said I'm just taking it in. I was talking to um my goddess. I'm just saying, yeah. It's just you know, is this almost like uh, Meduneta or not so much? Yes. Um. Right. Um. What you're gonna find is that when you do your research and study on the Algonquin language, like we stated, is Mandis, which is the language spoken by the East people, which is referred to as the Omex, in which that they were related to the Dogons, and the Dogons left out of Egypt 8,000 years ago. So they took with them um, the first um, writings and first information. Uh, of the language in which that was already developed, but they took with them over 8,000 years ago into Mali and West Africa, um, the Metronature language. So yes, this is part of the Metronature. Um, when you look in your documentation, your nationality, we put it in there so that we already get you um, accustomed to understanding the writing system, the wordage, um, the language, and its origin. So when you read your documentation, your nationality documents or affidavits, you will see we break down the origin 
of the language in which that we utilize as United Washington. Okay. All right, big. Yeah. Can you, can you hear me? It's kind of low. Hello? Yes, peace. Please. Um, I have a question about the language. Um, um, I just got into the conference call, and what what was the language again? What was the name of it? The the names again? Yep. I, um, I heard it was the Agakwa language uh, from the Medineta. What was the um? Right. Is that all? No, no. We, no, we call it. We refer to it as the United Washington language or Washington language. Um, there's a blend of Choctaw, Lenape, which is both Algonquin languages, so it's actually only just the Algonquin language. But when you do your research and study on the Algonquin language by Dr. Cl um, Clyde Winters, he specifically states that that language um, is mostly Mandese, which is Mandingo, all right, which is the Omex language, and which that was spoken, um, you know, um, over 5,000 years ago. Okay. And so when you go and do your research on who the Omex were, they are related and came out the same area in West Africa as the Dogons. As a matter of fact, they are related to the Dogons. So when you do your re research on the Dogons, who were they? They was the astrologers in ancient Egypt. And they left out of ancient Egypt over 8,000 years ago because they knew of the coming threat or which that would soon um, destroy um, that particular civilization and bring it down to some um, to some extent. So they took with them what became known as the Machu Nature and went westward um, Africa, in which that those Omex, who was their descendants, left from there and came westward to what we refer to as North America now. And so bring with them the same language in which that was spoken. So when you speak um, this particular language, you actually are speaking an African language, which is Mandese or Machu Nechu. Uh, you said Machu Nechu or um, Man Mandese? Right, Mandese. M A N D M -hmm. Mandese, um, E S, Mandese, or either you can refer to it as Mandingo. 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 M A N D E S. GKA, Mandinka. All right. And one more question about that. You said it was a blend of Choctaw and what else? Lenape. Lenny, okay. The Lenny Lenape. Which is, okay. once again, the, the Choctaw, which is Washita, which is Lenape, which is both or Algonquin. They're both all part of the Algonquin tribes or language or traditions and cultures. They're both Algonquin. So the Algonquin is um, Western Africans, Eastern Africans, in which that we refer to as um, the language of Machu Okay. All right, I got that. Right, but it's all within your documentation. Just go back and read it. We put it in there okay. um, under the um, affidavit of nationality when we speak about the um, various languages on which that um, and where it came from and how actually um, what developed soon into Arabic as well as Hebrew coming from the Mirek, um script as well as also coming from the demonic script, um, both coming from out of the hieroglyphics of the Metronature. In which that form Arabic and which that form Hebrew. Okay. Arabic and Hebrew. Right, came from, from the Mirroric. Um, M E R O I T I C, the, Mer the Mirroric um, script, and the demonic script, D E M O T I C. Both of those scripts are Metunetia or hieroglyphics. But the writing form of it looks identical to Hebrew and look identical to Arabic. So this is why you have Hebrew and Arabic being the um, um, brothers and sisters um, language. 
If you hear one will say assalamu alaikum, you hear the other one say ashalom alaikum. Or shalom alaikum. Same language, just different dialects. Just like if you was um, from New York and then you hear a brother coming from the islands, you know what he's saying and he knows what you're saying, but the dialect is different. He said, boom, but clock. You know what he's saying. You know, somebody getting ready to get effed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bati boy, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 he's saying somebody got a little bit too much. If he's a dude, he got a little bit too many, got a little bit too many feminine traits. <laughs> you know, so uh, it's not like you can't understand what he's saying. You know exactly what he's saying. It's just different dialects. So that's the same thing with Arabic and Hebrew, and which that are derivative of Metro Metro. Same thing with. Uh, Mandis, which is Algonquin, being derived from Machu Picchu. And this has been proven. That's why I specifically stated to get the information from Dr. Clyde Winters when he breaks down about the Omex um, language and their writing system. Okay. Okay, I got that. Mm hmm. All right. Um, as a matter of fact, let me see if I can um, pull it up and go over it right quick. That way, everybody's on the same page. Thank you, baby. It is beautiful to have a language, you know, um, when you look at all the other cultures, um, especially if you're in a city or, you know, if you're around a lot of cultures, they have their own language, you know, and it has been stated that we don't, you know, and it's deep to know that. And hence the reason, one of the reasons for our um, um, denationalization. denationalization as well as also our dehumanization. And because we don't have a culture, culture is based on language, is based on um, traditions, you know, is based on a particular philosophy and thought pattern, folk ways, mores of a people. I mean, when so-called black folks get together, we can talk about ham hocks and chitlins and shit like that, but, you know, when, you know the game that just came on. You know, um, you know, some old 1970s music, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yes, everything that we just said is part of the culture in which that we have had, but is it proper? <laughs> you know, ham hocks and chitlins might not be the best thing um, for so-called black folks who are majority or blood type. <laughs> you know, matter of fact, no blood type need to be eating pork. That's right. I mean, that's, that's the reason why the whole, that's why all the scripture speaks about against it, speaks up, out against it. Whether it's the Bible, the Old New Testament, whether it's the the, uh, the ancient comedic text of what is called the um, Ebra, um, Ebra um, papyrus, whether it's the Holy Quran, it just wasn't something on which that we did well with as far as our bodily system is concerned. As well as also has the trichinosis worm, which is something on which that once again in the system, if you're not taking some type of um, herbs and which that can help destroy it or some type of other type of medicine, um, it can ravish the body. You know? Um, you know, so that's just something on which that we, we have to understand is that it's now time in order to put things back into um, sequence here. All right, let me find it. So it has been said that this language is a dead language. Just like um, 
Latin. They'll say that Latin is a dead language when it's our, also our ancestry's language. Um, it's only dead because we have to speak it. Right. No one's speaking it. So that's what these efforts are for, to inspire it, to inspire it for us to be teaching our seeds. And you will be, you will be so surprised how it enhances your dreams. It also um, opens up more synapses and dendrites in your mind when you look at these letters, you know. Um, and I would say start with, well, we gave you a lot of simple words, but I would also say start with, like, um, looking at the, the, the way they're, the letters are written and practicing it. Um, also, maybe, like, flashcards for the seeds. Right. And we'll get to the writing system um, right now, as y'all will see. Can y'all see the screen? No. Okay. I just uh, can't see it right now. I went to waiting for a presenter to share the screen. Yeah. Yeah, it says stay tight. Oh, that's it? You see at the top. Oh, okay, okay. 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 Thank you. It can should come in, y'all, soon. Can y'all see it now? If not, it's on page yeah. 10 of your document. Yeah, I see you know, it. All right. So the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, Article 13, states indigenous people have the right to revitalize, use, develop, and transmit to, to future generations their histories, languages, oral traditions, philosophies, writing systems, and literatures and to designate and retain their own names for communities, places, and persons. All right? Two, states shall take effective measures to ensure that the right is protected and also ensure the indigenous people can understand and be understood in political, legal, and administrative processes or proceedings, excuse me, where necessary that the provision of interpretation or by any other appropriate means. Article 14, indigenous people have the right to establish and control their educational system and institutions providing educations in their own languages, providing education in their own languages in a manner appropriate for their cultural method of teaching and learning. Indigenous individuals, particularly children, have the right at all levels and forms of education of the state without discrimination. States shall, in, con in conjunction with indigenous people, take effective measures in order for indigenous individuals, particularly children, including their living outside, those living outside their communities, to have access, when possible, to an education in their own culture, to have an education in their own culture and provide it in their own language, to have an education in their own culture and provide it in their own language. So. So note, the Mandinka or the Maliki, also referred to as the Mandingo or the Mandingo, is a West African ethnic group and is descendants um, of the, um, look at that, and the Hohokaki, all right, of the Mali Empire, which rose to power under the rule of the Mandinka king, Sadiyara uh, um, Kita. Now, the Mandis people, and including Mandinka, um, Sonika, um, Bambara, um, the, Dio, um, the Diola, the Bozo, the Mandis, the Mendes, Susu, and the Ve. Now it says, the Mandinka language, or Mandinko, is the Mandis language spoken by the Mandinka people of Mali, um, Senegal, the Gambia, um, 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 and Ivy Coast, um, Burkina Faso, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone too. um, Liberia, right, um, Libya, um, Guinea Bissau, and Chad. Today, over ninety nine percent of Mandinka are Muslim, and Latin and Arabic script-based 
alphabets are widely used by Mandinka. So the Latin language, which was ours, has not been dead. They still use the script. 99% of prescriptions. All right. Right. They still do it just like doctors do here. When you go to, um, uh, when you become a nurse or when you become a doctor, you have to um, actually study Latin because the plants, um, the diseases, and so forth and so on, are in Latin. Uh -huh. All right. um, just like in law. If you go to law school, you have to learn Latin. So it's still spoken. All right, because majority of the, um, a lot of the, the vast amount of um, English words are taken from Latin, which is actually Moorish Latin. All right, so here, the two indigenous That's like Spanish. Right. right, which is, right, a lack of a better term now, what we be called Spanish, which is a derivative of, but, um, but is it so, somewhat of a, more of a, I guess you would say, lack of a better term, uh, uh, degraded somewhat. Okay. Right? But, but it still has, but it still has the essence though. You know, um, the two indigenous scripts, the Pan Mandi and the Nikul uh, Mandi Tan and the Mandis Fu, the Mandi speakers was part of the ancient Ma or Fish um, Confederation, which is the Dogon. Once again, this is what I'm telling you that all this consists of. Check this out. The Mandi speakers were part of the speakers now. That means the language, the tongue, which was part of the culture, part of the traditions, were part of the ancient Ma or Fish um, Confederation, which was the Dogons. So the Ma Confederation consisted of what? And of who? The ancient Egyptians, the Elamites, the Sumerians, the Dravidians, which is the Kushitic people out of India, in addition to the Mandis and other um, Niger Congo groups. In fact, the Olmecs of ancient Mexico were Mandi. They used the Mandi script found on the monuments at Mount Albine um, of Mexico. And they named the place from southern Mexico to South America with Mandinka names. Such names sometimes sound identical to the names of of places used in West Africa. All right, so look at the script. If you look at the script, it looks um, very much like Arabic. All right, this is coming from the Edwin Smith Surgical Papyrus, which is housed in the New York... Academy of Medicine, dating back to 1500 and 1600 BC. Now come down and look at the Moraic script, or the um, or the Napanda, or the, or the excuse me, the Napatan um, script, dating back to 800 BC to 600 AD. Why 600 AD? Is because that's around the time of Prophet Muhammad. This is Arabic. And this is the Arabic called Kufic, in which that is used today. All right, classical Arabic. Coming straight from the Muric um, script. So when you learn Arabic or Hebrew, the derivative of it is housed back over 8,000 B.C., uh, excuse me, 800 B.C. So right here in the Muric, or what is called the Napatan um, script, is the origin of what we refer to as Arabic. Although many scholars contend that the um, heretics development as an entirely distinct script from the Metru Nature, the obvious visual similarities prove that it is also a somewhat simplified form of metronature that was mainly used for more administrative or scientific um, documents throughout the dynastic history of both Kemet and Kush, dating back to 3200 BC through 600 AD. The first place on which that, if you read 
uh, what they refer to as um, hadiths written by Bukhari and different other so-called Arabic scholars um, on Islam and on Islamic history, specifically on Prophet Muhammad, they say the first place he went was to Kush or Ethiopia, in which they told them or him of his history. And remember, there was a language in which that he could not read. Based on the text, it says that the angel Gabriel came to him and said, Ikra, Ikra, read, Muhammad, read. He couldn't read. He couldn't read that language. He couldn't read classical Arabic or Kufic. But that's what the Quran is said to have been written in, which is actually um, Muric script, as you just seen. So it goes further and it says, the Kishite, Kemites, or Hamedic Metronetra script was developed by the ancient Egyptians um, priesthood who were Tessetians or Tennessean, which the Kushites is derived from the ancient Muraic script of 800 BC, 600 AD. In other words, the ancient Egyptians borrowed the script and it was the origin of the Semitic languages such as Phoenician, which is Canaanite, Hebrew, which is ancient Phoenician and Hebrew all the same, Aramaic, and specifically Arabic. All right? So of the spoken language of the copper tone really had more in the central maxim in the 1400s, um, Christopher Columbus said that he, um, according to his diaries, um, he said that the king who met him at the shores of Cuba, all right, which this is recorded in Africans and the Discovery of America by Lee, um, Leo Wiener, he said that that king in Cuba, which you refer to as Isabella, spoke Arabic, Chaldean, and Hebrew. Now, what in the hell is a king in Cuba speaking Arabic, Chaldean, and Hebrew? Where did that come from? How is that possible when these are so-called Eastern languages? Africa, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Mesopotamia, or these languages are spoken there within those areas. How did it get all the way into Cuba? How? All right? Because the Omecs spoke these languages, as which that we are telling you that Arabic, Chaldean, and Hebrew, these are nothing more than derivatives of the Mandinka language as we just finished showing you and proving. Get the books by Clyde Winters. All right? About the um, Omecs, um, um, the ancient language of the Omecs in the Americas. He specifically breaks this information down that we're talking about. Look at the script here, and you see how it looks identical to, once again, what? Arabic. All right, this is called the Montic script, which is um, 200 BC, and it's housed in the British Museum. My wife and I actually seen this in the um, British Museum. Right, the demonic script was introduced in the um, Tamari or Egypt or uh, Kemet 20, um, during the 25th um, dynasty under the Kushites. And this is where Arabic is derived from. So when we talk about Arabic and we think about them Arabs over the, we better go back to the original Arabs, in which that um, sex raised by Jerry Rogers speaks about who were so-called blacks or Moors or the book, What They Never Told You in History Class by Indo Kim and Kush, who told us that these were so called black people, wolves. Okay. So, um, let's go further. Because Dr. Barry Fell from Harvard University introduced in his book, Saga America, 1980, solid evidence on supporting the arrival centuries before Columbus of Muslims in North and West Africa come in here. He said, um, Fell um, discovered the existence of the Muslim schools at the Valley of Fire, um, Atlan um, Springs, um, as well as also 
um, um, the logo Marcino, as well as Keyhole Canyon, Rocho, and the Hickerson, um Summit Pass in Nevada, the Mesa Verdes in um, Colorado, and the Mimbres Valley, New uh, Mexico, and Tipper Canoe in Indiana, dating back to 700 to 800 CE. Um, now, who was these people that came? Well, you get um, books around that time. Um, you had import and export trade. You also had people such as Abu um, Bakari, uh, Mansa Abu Bakari the second, who actually sailed 200 ships here in 1311, and then a year or two later, 1313, um, he sell, he sent 1,000 ships. So we're talking about 1,200 ships came from off the coast of West Africa, and they was part of the um, what they refer to now as the Moroccan Empire, which was um, the Songhai, the Malian, uh, Ghana. They all combined, and it was called the Moroccan Empire. And we'll prove it. Matter of fact, a great scholar by the name of Dr. John Henry Clark verifies it in his book about the Holocaust of Christopher Columbus. And we'll go to that in a second. But he found texts, diagrams, charts representing the last surviving fragments of what was once a system of school at both a elementary and higher level. The language of instruction was North African Arabic, written in what? Old Kufic Arabic scripts. I'll be down. Hmm. The subjects of instruction included writings, reading, arithmetic, religion, history, geographic, um, uh, astronomy, what's that? Um, mathematics and sea navigation. The descendants of the Muslim visitors of North America are members of the presence, what? Iroquois, Algonquin. Uh oh, once again. The descendants of the Muslim visitors of North America are members of the presence, Iroquois, Algonquin, uh -huh. Anazi, Hohokan, and Olmec native people. All of us, Algonquin in particular. Uh -huh. Let's continue on. Here's the script. Once again, ancient Kufic scripts was employed uh, from the Ar Arabic language before the modern Arabic came into general use. This is why Muhammad couldn't read it. This is why they give that example. And I'm not saying that Muhammad actually existed because um, really um, we think Muhammad is based on another um, character because the Muhammad in which that they give us um, soon became a white man or a pale man just like they did with Jesus. And we know that no pale man by the name of Jesus and no pale man by the name of Muhammad, neither one of them existed. Sorry. All right. So if he ain't in his proper color, then he ain't in his proper place. This example dates back from approximately 700 AD and, occur, and occurs in Nevada, where it was mistaken for American Indian markings of about 1000 BC. The language of the Indians, aka Negroes, equals Algonquin and Arabic are essential to the same language, which goes back to Metro Nature. Damn, you get the book, Real Indians is the Negroes, a.k.a. the Blackamoors, by Dr. Ali, um, Ali Muhammad Bey. All right, right here in the Micmac tribe, they show you, which is what? Algonquin. Now check this out, look, look at this. Dr. Barry Fells, one of the Fells colleagues, bought him a book from Harvard, all right? Winterer Library that was written by a missionary priest in 
and published in 1866. It contains a document titled The Lord's Prayer in Micmac, which is hieroglyphics. Fell saw that at least half of the hieroglyphics were Egyptian. He was able to prove from the written testimony of other priests that the Micmac were using this script, this writing, when the first missionaries arrived. In fact, all the northern Algonquin, 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 the family of the tribes to which Micmac belongs, apparently used it. The family of tribes to which the Micmac belong, which is Algonquin, Lenape. As Fell began to study the Algonquin language, he found hundreds of Egyptian words in the dialect of the Northeastern Algonquins. Hundreds of Egyptian words in the dialect of the Northeastern Algonquin. So, Hebrew, so, Metu Metu, Hebrew, Arabic, and Mendes is all the same language. Barry Fell suggests that Egypt might have had intense contact with North America is strongly supported by um, the huge boats which were discovered in 1950 adjacent to the um, Khufu um, Great Pyramid. Now, they have a language called Kufic, then where else can we think about where the language called Kufic would have came from? Could it be Khufu? That, uh... So we here see ancient Egypt and Micmac language. Same language again. So what we're doing is simply tying, tying in the Hebrew, the Arabic, tying in which is Kufic, which is the extension of what we now refer to as um, uh, Canaanite into the into what we now refer to as the eastern port the the western portion of the language itself, which is the Omec or She language or the Mandis language to the Algonquin which is the Lenape, which is the northern branch, and which that is connected with the Micmac, as well as also the southern branch of Algonquin, which is the Choctaw, which is Washita. So we're simply showing that if the name Washita is derived from the ancient Egyptian word Ushita, which means serpent goddess, that is a reference to Kuntalini. All right. Here it is right here. Who is these Moors? Matter of fact, this is what this is what um Noble Drali said. Um Brother T. Booker Bay, the national the Grand National Treasurer, said that the Holy Prophet said that the Moors was living up and down the Mississippi River before the Europeans came here. That is that the Moors was living up and down the Mississippi before the um, the Europeans came to the United States of America. So who was these Moors living up and down the Mississippi before the arrival of the Europeans? It was the Washita. How we know? Well, there's many ways to know, but in the book, the Book of the Day, read by E.A. Wallace Bush, Washita or Ushet, or Ushet means was a form of Hawthorne, which is head head rule. It was identified with the appearance of the sky in the north when the sun rose. She is either depicted in the form of a woman having upon her head the crown of the north and the scepter, all right, round which a serpent is intertwined or as a wing you raise wearing the crown of the north. Now, you could, now, if you think about what, we, what you just read, that is the same symbol in which that is on the hospitals around the world, which is called the symbol of the caduceus. Well, you see, even on the ambulances, you see the serpent wrapped around the scepter. The scepter is symbolic to the spinal column in the top portion of the brain. 
look at it. That's the spine and the brain. And the serpent is intertwined or twined around it. And then when it reaches the point at the top, the wings spread out, as it says here, and you begin to wear the crown of the north. She was the principal goddess in the town of Butu in the delta. The goddess Rushet, which serpent headed. So the word washed was derived from the ancient metronetra to Marian word Usheta, which symbolizes the winged disc, the winged sun disc. So Yushet or Yusheta or Yushet, which is the serpent goddess, all right, symbolized the fertility goddess. All right, snakes lay many eggs and as protection from snakes. All right. Now, Yushet became part of the crown over the third eye which means to raise the eye, and it became associated with the eye. The Egyptians equi um, equivalent, um, um, equivalent of the Kutalini instead of the top of the head, which became associated with another god. The word Washtor derived from, the, from that word, Ueshetar, from Immortal, the symbol of the winged sun disk, or Ueshet, has been used to signify freedom and expansion, mind, soul, or raw time. In the Osirian mythology, Heru defeated Set by becoming Ur Washet, or the winged Sundis, the all encompassing divinity. Thus, it was decreed by Jehuti, wisdom, that the word Shet should be seen decorating every temple as protection from evil. So when you raise Kundalini up along the base of the spine and that serpent is intertwined with that scepter, which the spine going into the brain, and you develop the activation of the left and the right hemisphere of the brain, which symbolizes the wings, um, that pineal gland is activated with the Kundalini in which that awakens the soul to your highest potential, your godhood, your heruhood, or your Buddhahood. You become Prophet Muhammad. The all seeing praise one. All right? That's what Prophet Muhammad means, is the all seeing praise worth. You become praiseworthy as the all seer at that time. This is from the Osorian resurrection myth, the Haku 176b. Right? You go to Dr. Muwata Ashley's book, Egyptian. Tantra, Yoga Guide to Love, Sex, Marriage, Relationships, and Spiritual Enlightenment, he goes on to state that the Urashet is the epitome of the ancient Egyptian tantric mystical philosophy as it still is today. It is the supreme exposition of the understanding of all encompassing, all persuading, um, and absolute existence. Therefore, the wings are used by both gods and goddesses, that's your rules, in ancient Egypt mythology because the supreme divinity encompasses both male and female, all opposites in all existence, the state of androgyny. Thus, the order to overcome evil, which is the concept of opposite, is necessary to discuss the all-encompassing version or vision of creation. Within it, understanding that it cannot be evil since there is no duality opposites. So, that means being a Washington member means that your whole journey is to raise Kundalini so that there is no longer a discrepancy between higher and lower self. And this is what Prophet Nubu Ali spoke about in the 101s and in the Holy Quran Circle 7, as well as the 102s. Where he states there's two selves, name them. Lower self, higher self. Well, what unifies them? The Holy Breath is what unifies the lower self and higher breath, um, higher self. The breath is the mediator. And with the an ancient Kemet, that is Shu. Within Hebrew, that is Yashu, Wah, which is the um, Arabic name, or um, um, excuse me, which is the um, Aramaic or Hebrew name of what we refer to now as Jesus. So Jesus symbolizes the breath. Hence the reason why he was called the Word made flesh, because sound is what formed your physical body into existence. Sound is composed of two forces, Shu and Tefnu. In science today, you refer to them as centrifugal force and centripetal force, which holds the physical body together. That's why you breathe in and out, push and pull. 
Would that be that Christ or Jesus is basically like the fourth seal, like the heart chakra? Well, actually, it's the seventh seal. The seventh? I was under the impression that it was the fourth. Well, the fourth seal would be um, you moving from out of your lower self into conditional love. But to reach unconditional love, you must reach the highest level, which is in between your third eye, uh, or in between your forehead or brow chakra, which is called your third eye, but actually it's your fourth eye, which is the activation of your um, pineal gland, where your, soul is embedded, where your soul is embedded inside of. Your soul is embedded inside of your pineal gland. So you have three places of where um, the spirit dwells at within you. All right, you have one in your solar plexus, which is attached to an umbilical cord referred to as your civil cord or ethereal cord. You have one in your heart, which is on the left ventricle um, of your heart. And then you have one in your third eye, all right, or fourth eye is referred to it as, um, in which that is linked up through the top of your head into your oversoul. All right, so... Um, Upon death, that civil cord is cut, all right? If you was able to bring your kundalini up, or uh, umbalini, as it's also referred to, is above the fourth aritu, or chakra, or shankara, which is the heart chakra, you have moved into your immortal body, and you have left your mortal body. Your mortal bodies is your base or root chakra, which is the first chakra, your navel chakra, your solar plexus chakra, which is your third chakra, and your fourth chakra, which is your heart chakra. All right? Your whole purpose is to bring it up because that's where the concept comes from, is your heart lighter than a feather. If you move the kundalini above the heart, then it is lighter than a feather. If your kundalini is not moved um, above the heart chakra, then guess what? You must incarnate back here again. Immediately. Within two to five years. Okay. So, um, that is the scale of Mayat. Mayat, which also is a form of Isa, which is our set, which is the Arabic name for Jesus is Isa. So this is how they say that Jesus is the heart chakra. But he continues on on his path of enlightenment. All right. So um, the Rosicrucians use um, the heart, but they know that um, that you take with you at the heart. All your experiences, your memories of this incarnation is, is, is inscribed upon your heart, Adam seed, or seed Adam as it is referred to as. But you have three areas of seed atom, as we just spoke about. Your solar plexus, your heart chakra, your third eye, uh, which is your crown um, coming out. All right, so there's three areas of that seed atom. All right, so that seed, which is that heart, which is your life experiences, is weighed against the feather, which is the feather of Mayat, which the feather is also the symbol of Shu, which is Yashu. As in the sneeze in which that you make Yeshua. Yeshua is the Arabic name in which that oh he who saves. So the breath is what is weighed against the heart. Because the breath is the mediator between your lower self and your higher self. Between your uh, physical apparent reality and your spiritual reality. But given that, you know, what you just stated, in a sense, we are basically our own judge because we are the breath of life. Exactly. And that's what judges you um, at that time is your breath. Your breath, which is the feather, is weighed against the heart. And if your breath is um, lighter than the um, heart, um, or excuse, excuse me, if your heart is lighter than the feather, then you go on to immortality which means to a higher level of zone, or called a, it's called a cosmic zone, it's called a planet, it's called dimensions, density, levels, realms, cosmic zones, whatever you want to refer to it as. 
All right. Um, these are other planets in which that is higher than the third dimension, apparent reality. So you go to a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth. Um, in hyperdimensional physics, they have gone as high as twenty-seven um, dimensions. So wherever your consciousness is equivalent to, that's where you go at after um, death, as they would say. All right. Well, it's actually life after life because you really don't die. So I mean, all that is nonsense too. If you have a soul, you live on. You're immortal. So right here, go down. It says, when the serpent rise to the sixth stage, the form of God is seen. But a slight veil remains. It is as if one sees a light within a lantern and thinks that the light itself can be touched, but the glass intervenes. That is according to the new um, um, Encyclopedia Britannica of 1992. Hell, they're trying to drop it on you. Go up further. Go up. He says, according to M. Mespero, it says, the memoirs, um, Sir um, Corquise Papyrus states that the goddess, Yusheta, cometh up from the underworld, in other words, from the four lower chakras, and will change their faces into things of beauty with brilliant eyes of light. Well, what eyes are you talking about? The two eyes that you have, as well as also the third eye and the fourth eye. I fly up and perch myself upon the forehead of Ra in the bowls of his boat, which is in heaven. In other words, um, if you ever seen this symbol um, for the um, third eye or crown chakra uh, within the Sanskrit, it actually looks like a person on top of a boat, just, which is the symbol of Ra in his boat. Or bark. It's it. She goes on. I am the spiritual body of the sustainer of my life, too, which is made by the goddess Yushet. In other times, you raised come as the goddess Yushet. All right? What time is it right now? So, right here, it says that they believe that the unlimited power of individual godhood occurs when one sees. All right, so right here, it says, this is what Africans believe, that the unlimited power of individual godhood occurs when one who sees God. All right? So right here, we go further down. Um, we just read the um, new Encyclopedia Britannica, Britannica 1992. We go further down in the Old Testament, Genesis 32, 30. It says, Jacob called the name of the place Penio. For I have seen God face to face, and my life was preserved. And he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. All right? So right there, they're telling you um, that when you um, go to the place called Peniel, in other words, the pineal gland, which happens to be in your brain. That's where your soul is at. So right here it says, the New Testament, Luke 11.34 says, the light of the body is the eye. That's one eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. All right? So you're supposed to be drawing down energy from the crown chakra into that third eye in order to fill um, light throughout your whole cellular structure. As um, even the atom is said, if you get the book, um, Age is Body, Time is Mind, um, the Thomas Mind, Ancient Body, whatever the name I think is by, is by, um, um, what's his name? Um, Deepak Chopra. He states in there that 99.9999% of the atom is empty space. All right? So we know that, um, Subatomic particles or becomes atoms, atoms become um, cells, cells become, excuse me, becomes molecules, molecules become cells. All right, so that's the evolution, as we would say, within us. So the Watchtower is also historically known as the Choctaw, hence the tribe of Shabazz in which that was spoken of. All right. 
So um, I'm just going to leave it there for right now. Um, there's any questions? You have to unmute yourself because I had to mute because of the background if you have any questions. Okay. Um, if there's no questions, what I'm going to do is uh, make sure you all go back and read your documentation because that's where um, most of the information is located at. Um, your affidavits. Um, and then we'll get into um, the information um, next class, which would be Thursday. All right? Um, 8 o'clock um, p.m. All right, we see everybody then. Peace.